All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? So the draft lottery just finished up a couple minutes ago. I was live streaming my reactions. You guys know me as a Knicks fan. And once again, another year, no surprise, I was disappointed. It sucks. The Knicks dropped from six to eight. You can go see my live reaction on the channel. Minnesota won the lottery. And today we are going to be doing our first post lottery mock draft. So this is just going to be a lottery edition mock draft post the NBA draft lottery from last night. It's an interesting order. Charlotte moved up. Chicago moved up. Golden State moved down a pick. Atlanta moved down. Detroit also moved down. And then obviously the New York Knicks moved down. So now that we know the lottery, finally it's August. We usually know this in May, but obviously with everything that's going on, we know in August now uh, what the lottery is. So yeah, let's get into this first mock draft post the NBA draft lottery from August 20th. So the Minnesota Timberwolves have the number one overall pick here in the draft, and I don't think they're going to go LaMelo Ball. I don't like the fit with D'Angelo Russell. So I think that they're going to go the wing stud out of Georgia who has great defensive potential. He's already a really good offensive player. He's now going to be probably a number three in an offense rather than being the number one and kind of the only guy in Georgia. I'm going to have them select Anthony Edwards and I think he could fit right next to D'Lo as the two. And then he could play alongside maybe Culver or Koji uh, who's ever going to be starting at the three. And then obviously you still need your power forward. I don't think they're going to take Obi Top in one unless they're very set on Obi Top and next to the cat, maybe they would trade down but I think they're gonna go Anthony Edwards unless they also like Wiseman next to Cat now that could be something that would be kind of cool I don't know if Kirsten Rosas is gonna make that pick so the Warriors ended up with the second overall pick they dropped from one to two they got a little bit more lucky than the Knicks did last year dropping one to three no surprise there uh so I think that they really wanted Anthony Edwards but I'm gonna have them take James Wiseman I think Wiseman Edwards and LaMelo are going to be the top three consensus to most NBA teams. And I don't like LaMelo in that system. He's not going to get his shots. He's not going to get the ball in his hands that much playing with Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and all those guys. So I'm going to have the Golden State Warriors select James Wiseman and complete that starting five. Get that run protector. Get that athletic kind of freak who can kind of space the floor. He did in high school, not much at Memphis, but he could definitely learn to space the floor. Steph could teach him some things. And then obviously learn on the defensive end from Draymond Green. I think that'd be a great pick for Golden State. Honestly, the they could have dropped to five and not had Wiseman. Maybe they would have had to make a move to try to get a Kongwu or they would have ended up with the Kongwu in the strip, but they have a great chance to get James Wiseman. I think the Warriors and Warriors fans should be very happy. So now these Charlotte Hornets are number three. This was a surprise. I also tweeted out the Knicks and the Hornets. I don't know why, uh, that they were going to get the number one overall pick a couple hours before the lottery start. I was hoping that the Hornets would get number one. I think that they would love to get James Wiseman and that three I'm not sure what they would do because LaMelo Ball seems kind of like the pick here, but they have Devontae Graham, they have Terry Rozier. Would they do so? And maybe they would really like a Kung Wu here at three and they might take him. I could see them maybe trading down to five and maybe taking a Kung Wu there because they really need a center. It's going to be, I think, LaMelo or a Kung Wu at three for Charlotte, but I'm actually going to go a Kung Wu. This is just kind of my first impressions. Obviously, we're going to hear some stuff out of each team's like in reports who they're actually wanting to draft, and maybe it's going to be LaMelo in Charlotte because they're going to have a pretty good opportunity to do so, and I think there will be some trades on draft night. We didn't get any trades really. Actually, no, we did in 2019 with the Lakers shooting out of four, and then the Pelicans also trading out of that spot as well, and then in 2018, we got the Dallas Atlanta trade. So I think we will see a trade again here in the top seven. But for now, I'm going to have the Hornets select Aneka Okonwu and play him at center. So this means Chicago, who I think would have loved to win the lottery and take an Anthony Edwards. They could take maybe an Obi Toppin, but LaMelo Ball is also here at four. And I don't think they're going to pass up on that. He could be the sixth man, or maybe you would move Kobe White to the bench, but I think LaMelo can't fall any further. And I think if the Hornets don't take him, the Bulls will definitely take him. I can't see LaMelo falling to four uh, I or past four. Could also see maybe the Knicks calling up Charlotte if Charlotte thinks they can get their guy at eight or maybe Chicago if LaMelo is still on the board and we'll give you the 27th pick via the Clippers and another future Dallas pick. And then maybe if you want like a DSJ, Neil Akita, Kevin Knox just as a throw in or maybe a second they got, maybe the Detroit second down the line that they also got in the Marcus Morris trade, something like that. But for now, I'm going to have the Chicago Bulls select LaMelo Ball. They also took a point guard last year in Kobe White. 
But I, I just think he's the most talented player on the board. And if he falls to four, you have to take him or you got to trade down and get assets for that. So the Cavs are here at five. And this is also a pretty interesting situation. I think it could be down between three players in Denny of Dia, Isaac Okoro, or Obi Toppin. But I'm going to have them taking Denny of Dia. I think he has more boom potential. You, you hear the words boomer bust, but I think he has more potential and upside than Isaac Okoro. I think Isaac Okoro is a pretty safe pick to know what you're going to get from him. Probably a really good three and D guy in the NBA. But the Cavs need more than that. They need kind of a transcendent player. And I think Denny of Dia has a better chance at being that over Obi Toppin and Isaac Okoro. So I'm going to have the Cavs select uh, Denny of Dia at five. So for the second straight year, they're going to have the fifth overall pick and they had six in 2018 as well. Now with the sixth overall pick, I think the Atlanta Hawks are going to go Isaac Okoro if he's on the board. They could play him next to Trey Young and Isaac Okoro is such a good defender coming into this draft. He's probably a top four permanent defender uh, in this draft alongside Devin Vassell and Patrick Williams. But I think they could put him next to Trey Young and he can really help him out on the defensive side of the ball. And he definitely has some very good offensive abilities also, so I think it would be a really nice fit. You could have Trey Young at the one, Okoro at the two, Hunter or Reddish at the three, Collins at the four, Capella at the five, and then you would either have Hunter or Reddish who's ever not at the three off the bench with Kevin Herter. And I think that's a pretty solid top seven that could maybe make the Hawks a playoff team next year, and that could maybe bring them to the eight seed. So I'm gonna have them take Isaac Okoro here at six. With the seventh overall pick, I'm gonna have the Detroit Pistons select Tyrese Halliburton. I think they could go a guard. Now, Obi Toppin is still on the board. So maybe they would go Toppin, but as a team with like the bleakest situation and probably the worst position in the NBA in the Detroit Pistons, they can't draft a 22 year old. They just can't. They need to go somebody they can develop and become a really good player in the NBA. And that leaves some guards. They could go Killian Hayes. They could go Halliburton. They could go Cole Anthony. I think Halliburton might be the best out of those three to some teams. And I think he can kind of sit behind D. Rose, learn from him, play next to Luke Kennard for the future. And I think that would be a nice pick for the Pistons. Obviously, they didn't really get too lucky in this draft, falling from five to seven. But hey, I guess it's better than picking at eight where the New York Knicks are. And I'm going to have them select Cole Anthony. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Obi Toppin was still here. They went Obi Toppin to maybe go long-term him and Mitchell Robinson. And honestly... I'd be open to that. I, I really would, but I think the Knicks are going to take a point guard. So I'm going to have them select Cole Anthony, a point guard out of UNC. He has offensive potential. He's a really good shooter. He's good in transition. He's a good ball handler. He's a pretty solid passer. And he was in, you guys know, a horrible situation in UNC last year. And I think he could be a pretty good NBA point guard. He's not LaMelo Ball, but he's probably the next guy I would personally want. So at nine, Obi Toppin is still here, but I'm going to have him not, not at nine to the Wizards. I'm going to have the Wizards select Devin Vassell. They need offensive help, yes, but they mainly need defensive help. And Devin Vassell was a pretty solid defender at Florida State a year ago. And I think they could really use him on the wing with Bradley Beal there. They kind of have their power forwards as of now. They're playing kind of Rui Hashimura at the four and Davis Bertans, who they plan on bringing back at the four. So I don't know if they would really go Obi Toppin. I'm sure they would love maybe a Kung Wu or James Wiseman, but... Neither of the two are probably making it to nine. So I think they would go Devin Vassell, maybe mold him into a small forward and have like a wall, Beal, Vassell, Hashimura slash Bertans for it and figure out your center long term. So this leaves us to the Phoenix Suns at 10. And as this mock draft, I don't know if Obi Toppin will actually fall to 10 come draft time. But for now, I'm going to have him go to the Suns. This actually might be like the best case scenario for the Suns. I guess their point guard they want or Obi Toppin falling to them at 10 would literally be amazing for them because you still need to figure out your point guard, but you still have good years of rookie Rubio left. So you're not desperate for that. You have your best player at the two in Devin Booker. You have solid small forwards or actually pretty good small forwards in Kelly Oubre, Miko Bridges, and Cam Johnson. You have your center, the former number one overall pick from the 2018 draft in DeAndre Aiden. So you really need that power forward because Dario Sarge probably isn't the answer there. And I really don't like Cam Johnson at the four. So I think Obi Toppin would be perfect. I don't know if he falls the Phoenix at 10 on draft night, but if he does, it's a match made in heaven. Coming here with the 11th overall pick, I'm going to have the San Antonio Spurs select Killian Hayes. Yes, a little bit of a surprising pick here because they have a really crowded backcourt at the moment with DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker, and Derek White. Three solid young point guards that deserve playing time, but you know the Spurs. They love drafting foreign players. Killian Hayes is super crafty. He's super talented, and I think in that player development staff, he could be a really good player. And I think the Spurs would maybe pull that out of left field. If not, maybe they would go Aaron Nesmith, but I'm going to have them select Killian Hayes. With the 12th overall pick, I'm going to have the Sacramento Kings select Aaron Nesmith, a really good shooter, a talented scorer out of Vanderbilt. Their small forward position is interesting because Buddy Heald, who is a wing, we could say their wing situation, 
He might get traded soon. He's expressed that he's kind of unhappy in Sacramento. Bogey is a restricted free agent. I'm sure they're going to bring him back. Harrison Barnes isn't getting any better. He's get only getting older. Maybe Aaron Nesmith could be that guy they could plug in at the three and be a really great offensive talent for them. So I'm going to have the Kings select Nesmith at 12. With the 13th overall pick, I'm going to have the New Orleans Pelicans select Kyra Lewis Jr. out of Alabama. I've been kind of harping on this pick for New Orleans to make at 13 for a while now. They did fire Alvin Gentry, but I expect their next head coach to still kind of have a run and gun mindset. They're extremely young. They're extremely athletic. They're all their kind of starters are good in transition. Hayes, Zion, Ingram, Lonzo, even Drew Holiday. And I think Kyra Lewis fits that mold. Like I've said, Lonzo Ball is going to be a restricted free agent in 2017. I don't think it's a guarantee that he's going to come back in New Orleans. Who knows if a team might overpay for him on the market. So they can kind of mold Lewis just in case Lonzo leaves or they don't bring Lonzo back to be their next point guard. And finally, with the last pick of the lottery and of the video, I'm going to have the Boston Celtics select Patrick Williams, a wing out of Florida State. Williams has been kind of getting the mantle of the best defender in this draft. The Celtics don't need offense. They have Kemba Walker, they have Jalen Brown, they have Jason Tatum, they have Gordon Hayward. They're extremely talented on the offensive end, but you can always add more defense. And adding Patrick Williams to that second unit alongside Marcus Smart would be a problem for a lot of NBA teams. And it's not like the Celtics need to make a home run on this pick. They don't specifically need any position, maybe center, but there's really no great centers to select at 14. So they can kind of select whoever they want uh, and just go best available. And in their minds, it could be Patrick Williams, arguably the best defender in this draft. And I'm going to have him go to the Celtics at pick 14 to wrap out the lottery. So yeah, that is going to be my mock draft post the 2020 draft lottery. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. You can also let me know what you guys thought of the lottery. If you guys came out to the live stream, thank you. I really appreciate that. It was super fun, even though the Knicks just, they always fall, but it is what it is. You know what? You can't be mad at the end of the day. I mean, you can, you know what? I should be mad, but maybe they're going to find their guy at eight. Who knows? But yeah, thank you all for watching. I love you guys. And I'll see you guys next video. Peace.